What's up, Foot Clan? We got a great show for you today. Make sure you stay tuned. We're covering the AFC North, a bunch of fantasy football news. You do not want to miss it. Stay tuned. Oh, it's that time of year. Fantasy football is back. Everything is ramping up. Your leagues are getting ready. You're talking trash with your friends. You need to make sure you get this year's 2019 Ultimate Draft Kit so that you can dominate those fools, make them look stupid. This year we've added a new mobile app. It's awesome. If you want all of our projected stat lines, every sleeper breakout bust, all the information, Dynasty Auction, it's all in there. We're updating it all season long. It is the most proven tool for fantasy football. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com. Hello, my name is the Mighty Steve, and I'm from Newcastle in England. My team is ABC, easy as RG3, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Top of the morning. Bonjour. (laughs) It's good to be back, guys. How are you feeling, Jason? I feel fantastic. I got some sun in the California beaches. (laughs) California (laughs) sun. It's it's a lot different than than your sun. So here's the thing that I actually figured out. Like, it's 70 degrees in San Diego. Obviously, it's 128,000 degrees in Arizona. Accurate. And so, like, yeah. it's much cooler there just by the temperature. <laughs> but here's what I found out. When you go outside and you stand there without shade, it's the same sun that is here in yes. Arizona. They don't actually have a different sun, and it's so hot. And it bakes your skin, and that is terrible. Sun is hot. Accurate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More hot takes on the way welcome man tuesday july 23rd guys we're almost to five shows a week territory i can't wait we're almost to because that means it's time for real actual fantasy football camp <laughs> not real actual football real actual fantasy football Look, that's I've, right Mike. i've heard there's there is some football starting they based the fantasy football off of the real game did you not know look they can thank us for their contracts. <laughs> That's fantasy, for sure. Fantasy football camps are opening up yes. soon. Fantasy football season. They are. Draft kits are open right now. <laughs> That's right. We have a great show. We're in the AFC North today. Steelers. Oh, there's going to be some Ravens. Heated, heated discussions on Browns. the Steelers. Oh, uh, the Bengals are there too. Yeah, we'll cover the Bengals at least a little bit. I think you, well, Th- this is, we're going to talk one of, about all of them. Front to back, this is one of the most interesting, compelling divisions for fantasy football. Because sure. even though prior to recording, you know, I was kind of talking about how I'm a little bit more down on the Bengals this year, including their fantasy options. They're the worst team in the division, and they have great, you know, highly drafted fantasy options there. So, I mean, you know, it, it feels like we've done a lot of these divisional shows where once you get to the last team, you're kind of right. like... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't want anybody? Pass. All right, you can find us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell so you're notified of brand new shows and segments and highlights and everything you need to know for fantasy. You can find us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. We're on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And um Jason mentioned it at the top of the show, but the Ultimate Draft Kit is available now. $1 of every UDK sold goes directly to our good partners at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. This year, they've been incredible partners for the, the live tour where yes. you know, we'll be in L.A. here in a couple of weeks and back in Phoenix for that. So shout out to St. Jude and all the work they're doing. We're happy to be a part of it. And here's your quick question for the day. So it comes in uh, from Eric. Eric. Yeah, no, that would be it. That, that meant something don't, to you. <laughs> no, don't worry. That, there's, right. there's people out there that know what I mean. It's a league change voting question, and this is something that comes up a lot. How many votes do I need to make a change to the league? Some of us want to replace kicker with a second quarterback. Mm. Mm. What okay. do you think? Well, you need one vote mm. for that. That's 
if you're wanting to get rid of kicker, do you need a vote or do you just need like an you idea? Just need, you need an idea, a thought, a yeah. whisper in the wind to say get rid of kickers from fantasy football. Um, I know, Andy, you disagree with me on that, but in, in reality, <laughs> in your case, you need someone from a neighboring league to just cast one vote, right? And that's yes, fine. and that's good enough. Change it now. Get. I him. knew a guy <laughs> who had a roommate, and he was <laughs> well, dating someone, look, and they got rid of kickers. You're right, listening right. to this podcast right now. This, what we are telling you, is enough. Get rid of kickers. Um, but no, in in reality, for a league, you need majority. Now, for something like this, the question is: Do you need a super majority? Do you need unanimous, or do you just need? Seven out of twelve. If you're in a twelve, right? Person there's league. there's pl plenty of leagues that don't need any votes at all. The commissioner ends up just making the decision. So that's step one. Is you know, not in America. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not in my American <laughs> leagues. They're democracy. Well, it, the thing is, is it should be a vote. Something as fundamental as a second quarterback position. Yes. I would say you need a super majority. You would need something. I like agree. Seventy. You know, a ten man league. Seven of ten owners. Uh, I'm not doing the math on the other leagues, but you can apply the 70% yeah, rule. The super -ness. The super majority. Um, that's it's where I, you know, somewhere. And there are things, I mean, unanimous decisions. If you're going to expand the roster or like to keepers, if you're going to move to keepers, that's something that I would like to say is needs to be a unanimous decision or at least that rule has to get put in place with plenty of lead time for people to make adjustments. You can't just have a majority vote mid-season that now we're doing keepers oh. and no, but the other half of the league hasn't planned for Ch it. Changing to a Because I'll vote for it if I have good keepers, and I won't if I don't. <laughs> right. Changing to a money league, that needs to be something that's unanimous. You can't be like, well, we've been in this league for 10 years. Now we now we want you know money. And you know that needs everybody. If you're doing any crazy um, punishment, say loser gets a tattoo. Oh, we're going to. Go ahead and say yeah. that one's going to need to be unanimous. <laughs> we had someone who wrote in. Remember this? Yes, I Where do. it was like a 12-man league, and 11 of the 12 owners voted for it to be a tattoo league. He didn't want it. He was the only he's one. like, what do I do? finished last. You, you are not no. stuck to get that tattoo. No. But Jason, I'm going to suggest something. I know you want to get rid of kickers. Yes. Have you thought about just belittling them? Like changing their... I have done it my entire but, professional but life. fundamentally in fantasy, change their points to like... Point one points for a fifty yarder. I am one hundred percent fine with See that. See what I mean? Then they start to get feel bad. But they may leave the leagues on their own. Mm. Is what oh, I'm saying. That'd be delightful. I see. <laughs> now I, I see prefer. Where you're going. I prefer if you are going to listen to this and say, "Hey, I'm going to go back to my league and make it better. We're going to get rid of kickers. Uh, get rid of the <laughs> unknown that people don't really put a lot of work and effort into." I would replace it with an extra flex. As opposed to an extra quarterback. We can go super flex. Sure, if you want two quarterbacks. Yeah, that was the point. You were just saying it's a profound change to go to a super flex league. Yeah, that changes the dynamic of the league in, in very large ways, which is, I mean, super flex league is great. Yeah, all right, fair enough. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, there's a few pieces of news. Um, Brooks wanted me to mention this. I see a little note pop up in there, but we are we did start something new, something to help fantasy owners in general, and it fits in with the news thing. And uh, if you are interested, we've started a newsletter called the oh, Bl called the Blitz. It's so cool, and it's it, it's kind of a reimagined way of like you've all gotten newsletters, you've gotten piles and piles of information and links and solicitations. That's not the point of the Blitz. The Blitz is you get the five biggest stories in fantasy football delivered to your inbox once a week. We curate the stories. We add in a little bit of uh, a spin and some snark, and we make it fun. And that's it. That's what the Blitz is. First one goes out Thursday. Yeah. You don't want to miss it. So you can, uh, if you want to sign up for that, it's free. Uh, you just go to thefantasyfootballers.com slash Blitz. And, and a little insight here, peel back the curtain. This has been like a six-month uh, pet project from Andy that he's wanted forever to have. Like, he really has been the driver behind this. He's excited. We, I just want something useful for people to get when they open it up, and you can read it, and I don't know. It's going to be like – you can probably read it in uh, – what I've been saying is half a poop. Half a poop. Oh, nice. Not a f you don't need a full. Half yeah. a poop, you can read it. Okay. It's just quick, easy-to-consume information. It's the, Look, the thought's already there. I can't move away from it. Oh, great. Let it out. Oh, the the Just turn half of, of it. The turn of phrase. Peel back the curtain. Okay. When have you ever peeled a curtain? Hmm. 
Hmm. I think it's just the expression of you peel things, and that same motion is what you use to pull a curtain back. It's really not that hard. You That's how you peel an orange? Well, no. <laughs> now you get a nice grip. But I mean, that's just, how you peel yeah, a banana? Turn a banana sideways and then peel it, and that will be very similar to the motion of opening a curtain, Mike. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. Like, I think you could do it. Look, <laughs> we, we say a lot of things, and we don't even actually think about what we're saying. That's one of those. That's very Well, you can no noodle on it for a while. Think about it. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing it right now, and so is everyone listening to this show. All right. The uh, a bunch of uh, active PUP list news coming out. The Texans placed DeAndre Hopkins. Which was, This one was a little bit surprising. Yeah, they, they said that the issue is presumably his shoulder because he revealed that he had, quote, torn some of the ligaments off the bone mm. in the playoff loss to the Colts. And so the thing about this pup news is I don't overreact fantasy owners. That's my opinion. Not yet. Some of them are surprising, but the thing is that you can come off the PUP at any moment in time. There's two types of PUP. There's the active and the reserve. If you hear someone is being put on the reserve PUP, they're going to miss some time guaranteed. If they're on the active PUP at any moment, they can come back off it's it's just basically saying, hey, we can use roster spots and you. for uh, for other players right now while we're waiting on him. But, the, but it can bring to light some injuries you don't know exist, yes. and that's what happened with Hopkins. And the, the quick counterpoint to this was, Will Fuller avoided yes the pop list, which is that's great news for the Texans' offense and for Fuller. Yep, the Patriots put Sony Michelle on the active pup. Yep, so he won't be on the field. More Damian Harris snaps, more James White snaps as of right now. This was surprising. Uh, it was discovered that Julian Edelman, former or last year's Super Bowl MVP, uh, spotted at his youth camp with a brace on his thumb, going to be sidelined for at least three weeks due to the injury. That's according to league sources. And uh, Field Yates reported and, that as and well. And Shefty. And Shefty. So Edelman missing some time. This is the problem. Yeah, it is the problem with Julian Edelman. I mean, th this. I, did I adjust him yet? No. I don't Are think he's going to miss to? any time. Well, here's what it brought to mind. Yes, I might. Not because of the thumb specifically le bleeding into the season, but because that Edelman chose to remind me of the state of Edelman. The state of Edelman is very often this state. And am I factoring that enough into my lofty projections of Julian Edelman for this season? Because it's he's the greatest player to prognosticate over 16 games. He's not the easiest player to get through 16 games. So, yes, it's bringing to mind some of the – maybe I need to think of him more of as a 14-game type of guy because he's going to miss a game or two being banged up. That's sure. true. He plays too hard to stay healthy. But even if you're giving him those 14 games, uh, like right now on calculator, Julian Edelman is going at the beginning of the fourth round. To, so to you and what you feel about Julian Edelman, is I'm he still worth – I'm talking about my projected stat line. He's absolutely worth But is worth he still that worth spot. that draft oh, price? Oh, he's worth better than that spot. Okay. But uh, my total stat line is what I'm looking at. Sure. Um, Yahoo's Charles Robinson just reported the Chargers are, quote, dug in. This is not good. With their stance on Melvin Gordon's holdout. G Gordon says he's going to hold out to get his money. The Chargers are presumably taking their stance to try to navigate this situation. We don't know what's going to happen. It's not good for something not to have happened immediately. But, you know, I'm more concerned in, you know, we get to August – preseason game two and we're talking about melvin gordon as a big issue because there's a lot of leagues that draft early you know that are out there you're yes. drafting now you're drafting yeah. this week and you've got to make a decision what do i do with melvin gordon i can tell you for me and i i've said this since the news came out i'm not drafting melvin gordon in, in the maybe the very end of the first but in when there's a lot of other good players look i like melvin gordon a lot more than joe mixon but if I'm at a point in the back end of the first round where it's those two guys and I'm drafting now, I'm drafting Joe Mixon without hesitation because I think there is a really good chance that Melvin Gordon misses a few games, if not, you know, a, a dire Lev Bell type situation. This just nothing here looks good. Melvin Gordon seems like he's completely willing to play the game of chicken. And we've seen the Chargers lose the game of chicken so many times. It, you know, you just don't want. This just isn't a uh, – for, for a first-round draft capital that you're spending on fantasy players, why take the risk that you know is there now? Now, obviously, That's it. if he signs tomorrow, great. he's my number five running back. Well, and, and we just had – now this is a different situation, but with Tyreek Hill, everybody who took the chance on drafting him at the fifth round and things like that paid off because it bent in your favor. I still believe they'll get something done, but 
one of the things complicating this extension is the fact that you know you're talking about an extension period that that's going to uh, go across the new collective bargaining agreement which is complicating a lot of discussions about extensions because people don't know what that new CBA is going to look like. I think they'll get something done. You do not necessarily think it will be something that doesn't impact the fantasy season. So Austin Eckler, Justin Jackson, they need to be on your radar. How comfortable would you be of not moving much in your, your draft spot but insuring yourself with an Eckler? Yeah, I mean, would I, you start doing that, if, or is it? I mean, because then you're taking two picks. Well, we, we had this situation, right? We we drafted Melvin Gordon in our Scotty Fishbowl League right before the news broke about this, and we turned around a little while later and we grabbed Eckler at a at a good spot. I think if you if you do go Gordon, you need to have protection. Mike, do you think he misses a game? Uh, yes, I do, and that okay. really sucks. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and look. Uh, where else are we? Cowboys. They report to camp in a few days. It has not been decided whether Zeke will hold out for it. Because welcome to another situation. This is the best Joe thing Mixon, we get to talk about. All of a sudden, about. Joe Mixon goes number one in all drafts <laughs> because of this. But uh, we'll find uh, out soon whether Zeke uh, decides uh, to try to hold his, out. His does not have the air of affecting the season. This is like because it's two years left on the contract. He's sending a message this year. And he has to be back uh, August 6th. Is it the 6th? I believe so. To accrue, it was the 4th in my head, but it could be the 6th, to accrue his uh, a year of playing to get into, to be a free agent where he can actually really have leverage. So he'll, he will show up. Eagles have signed Darren Sproles to a one-year contract. Didn't get to talk about it on the Saturday show. It was just breaking uh, after Mike and I had recorded that show. This now... And I'm going to do this, this top ahead, right? Interesting. Corey Clement on roster right now. Okay. Corey Clement, Miles Sanders, Josh Adams, Wendell Smallwood, Boston Scott, Donnell Pumphrey, Darren Sproles. You missed the one they traded for. And uh, Jordan Howard. Yeah. That yeah. is eight. That is eight roster backs. Now I expect They're three looking... or four to be cut. Oh, I thought they were looking for some more, <laughs> but I could be wrong about that. Not yet. Not yet. No, I mean, it, it says that Corey Clement, Josh Adams, I don't expect them to make the roster. I think Clemens uh, there. I think Clemens 100 percent on the roster. Yeah, like Pumphrey. Pumphrey think, Pumphrey, Boston Scott, and who did you say? Josh Adams? I think Josh Adams I think is those gone. three are gone. Yeah. But look, the team my the only real worry here that I started to think about was what does it say about Miles Sanders' hamstring? Like, yeah. Like in a week I could be stupid to think this, but if you're signing Darren Sproles with seven existing backs, maybe he's not that healthy right now. Maybe he's not going to be back and healthy in camp. That's what I'm looking for as a fantasy owner because I love Miles Sanders' opportunity to be the guy from week five on. All right, and Sproles, Sproles still has juice. Like when you use him in, in small amounts and you you get him the ball in space. That's the only way to use Darren Sproles. Well, Ooh. just just saying Fight that joke. that he was he was still effective. Stature joke yes. when he could actually play. All right. News and notes brought to you today by Sleeper. Download the free app. Move your league to a modern platform with infinite customizations. We also want to thank a couple sponsors before we jump into the AFC North breakdown. I love that I get to talk about Shady Rays. You do. Because I've been wearing Shady Rays sunglasses for at least the past two years. They were never a sponsor then. Now they're a sponsor of the show, and I love them. Even better. You want to know why I love them? I mean, there are a lot of reasons. They're kind of like us. They're not a huge corporation, and they don't overcharge for stuff, you know. But one of the reasons— And they're awesome looking. They're awesome like looking us. like us. <laughs> I lose my sunglasses. I never True go story. invest a million dollars in sunglasses. I lose them all the time. So I found Shady Rays. I like their glasses. I wear them, and they got the best warranty in all of eyewear. You want to know why? They give you free replacements. You just pay the shipping and handling if you lose them or break them. So I do both of those things with my sunglasses and now I don't have to go buy a brand new pair. I just exchange it. Doesn't matter if you drop them into the ocean, Jason, when you were paddleboarding this past weekend. Uh that that was a realistic situation. <laughs> and they're guaranteed for life. Look, Shady Rays is giving you the best deal they have to offer. Use the code footballers at shadyrays.com for fifty percent off two or more pairs. This is Black Friday level stuff, guys. You get two pairs, forty five dollars at ShadyRays.com with the code FOOTBALLERS. Easy. Want to thank today's sponsor, Smile Direct Club. You can get a smile you'll love in about six months 
with Smile Direct Club. Let's be honest. We've all looked in the mirror and said, you know what? These teeth, uh, they could use a little straightening, but you don't want to go through the braces. You don't want to go through the money. Well, now you can use Smile Direct Club, straighten your teeth for about for 60% less than braces with clear aligners sent directly to you. You can go online and book that free 3D image at one of their smile shops, or you can order an at-home impression kit. And once you get your aligners, one of the Smile Direct Club's duly licensed doctors will check in on your progress every 90 days. Check this out, Foot Clan. Get a free 3D image of your smile at one of their smile shops or get a $25 rebate on an at-home impression kit. Then, exclusive for our listeners, you get $100 off your clear aligners at smiledirectclub.com slash podcast. Use the offer code FANTASY. I'm going to repeat that because it's a little bit different. Get the $100 off at smiledirectclub.com slash podcast. The code is fantasy smiledirectclub.com slash podcast. Offer code fantasy. Let's get divisional. All right. Sultry. Let's do it. AFC North breakdown. Last year, the Ravens won the division at 10 and 6. The Steelers, 9, 6, and 1. The Browns battled to 7, 8, and 1. And the Bengals brought up the rear at 6 and 10. So we'll start by talking about the Baltimore Ravens. They went on a run. Once Lamar Jackson took over this offense, this roster, it's a very interesting one. Off-season addition-wise, they brought in Mark Ingram at the running back position. You know, we had been dealing with Alex Collins and Gus Edwards and Kenneth Dixon and Javorius Allen and some ensemble. We know that head coach Jim Harbaugh wants to be able to run the ball. Offensive coordinator Greg Roman wants to be able to run the ball. This season with Lamar Jackson and that running back core, they also drafted Marquise Brown in the first round. Hollywood! I. I, if you, you didn't do that there, me, yeah. If you didn't do that there, I was gonna cry. Fourth round pick Justice Hill, who is a really good player. I, I look sure. forward to talking about him. Miles Boykin, a wide receiver in the third round. So, no more Alex Collins, no more John Brown, no more Michael Crabtree, no more Brashad Perryman. That experiment is over. But what are we expecting out of this offense? Last year they were the second best rushing offense in football, obviously with Lamar Jackson carrying the ball a ton. They also have 55%, 55. 55 vacated targets. Yes. That is the second highest number of vacated targets. Um, there are new pass catchers in tow, and we wonder, can Lamar Jackson get them the ball? And and can he and stay on the field? It is fair to wonder. It, it is fair to wonder. If you look at how the wide receivers did, look, the Ravens come week 10. That's when Lamar Jackson got his start. They were so much better. They went on their run. They made the playoffs. The team had great success. But their fantasy players, their, their, their receiving core was dead in the water the second that Lamar Jackson took over. So some of these tools might help Lamar Jackson, but can Lamar Jackson help any of the receiving options be viable fantasy players? I'm not going to... I'm not going to put any of my stock into the receiving core, certainly not at wide receiver. Maybe Mark Andrews at tight end. But Lamar Jackson himself, he was the number 11 quarterback from the time he took over in week 10. So that's his. That's actually seven games. A lot of times you think 16-week right. uh, season, 17. Their bye week was before week 10. So he had seven games as a starter, and he was not a, a top end. He wasn't like what Josh Allen did where he had these – Weeks where he finishes number one, number two. Uh, what what Lamar Jackson did was he finished, you know, 12, 13, 8, 9. Those are still good numbers. But over that stretch, seven games, he was the number 11 quarterback in fantasy. So he is a viable. He's super late, sometimes undrafted. He, had, he didn't get the buzz that I think going out of last season, we thought he was going to be super overdrafted. Because Kyler Murray, Josh Allen, they're getting the running quarterback hype. I think Lamar Jackson is... A, a great fantasy option well, late in drafts. The the problem for Lamar was he was a running quarterback, but but that was it. I mean, when it came to throwing the ball, he was averaging about 160 passing yards a game, which is that's that's embarrassing. Those are embarrassing numbers for a quarterback in today's NFL. Point seven passing touchdowns per game, 
but comboing that with point four interceptions a game. So it's nearly and twelve fumbles, one point yes. seven fumbles per game. I, he also had the worst, or sorry, the second worst red zone completion percentage in the league. He just never had the game where he had. I think the reason he's not kind of emboldened on people's minds as much is he never had that breakout game with the with the arm. He never had the three touchdown game right. because if you com he never busted in any of those games that Jason no, no, brought he was up. Very safe, but super his, safe, never blew up. He did not have the ceiling, and he here is my fear for Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Now it's it's not a complete apples to apples situation. Robert Griffin the third came into the league, came into Washington, took him right into the playoffs, set the world on fire. Now he was injured right at the end. Washington the next year went three and thirteen. Do not forget what happened to Lamar Jackson in that playoff game. The, the Los Angeles Chargers were annihilating the Ravens. I know that the the score f finished twenty three to seventeen. But in the fourth quarter, with nine minutes left, this game was 23-3, to and Lamar Jackson was able to get literally, literally nothing done. And now it's a completely revamped passing core or wide receiver core. He doesn't – like, Willie Sneed's his veteran. I mean, it, it, that's really tough to get a kid to – you're going to acclimate to the NFL throwing the ball, and all your wide receivers are brand new to the NFL as well. So that's my concern that the Ravens – things could flip – quickly for the Ravens their their defense will still be elite but I think that they could uh, talking about their win total could plummet at least a few wins now Marquise Brown Hollywood first round pick and he's still hurt I was gonna say they uh he's progressing well should be back on the field in the next few weeks from the list rank injury um, but I wanted to highlight that you're right I mean there there are some similarities between what Baltimore did and Arizona did in as much as like they invested two early picks on wide receivers. The Cardinals did the same in the Cardinals situation. Their veterans, Larry Fitzgerald, you got Willie Sneed right. in Baltimore. Um, but let's, let's turn to the running game. Mark Ingram has not been discussed a lot, right? He was the complimentary back with Alvin Kamara in New Orleans. I haven't seen a lot of people excited to draft him, but he could come out very hot. His first four weeks of the season. It's nice. Miami. 31st against the run last year. Arizona, 32nd. Kansas City, 27th. Cleveland, 28th. Now, I expect some turnover with those defensive fronts, but you're you're talking about four teams that were pretty much the worst in football at stopping yeah. running backs. The team ha is projected to have the seventh-best offensive line, according to the huddle. Could Mark Ingram come out and make a lot of owners regret not investing in him higher in drafts? I, I think because of the... Uh, because of the opening schedule, he could get off to a hot start. But I, I personally don't think people are going to have major regrets because it's not like Mark Ingram is this late sixth round pick that you can get and he'll overperform. Right now, he's going at the back of the third, the top of the fourth, right at the three, four turn. That is, I mean, you know, he's going ahead of David Montgomery and Sony Michelle, Philip Lindsay, Chris Carson. Uh, those are players that I would prefer over Mark Ingram because while the Baltimore Ravens, they're a great running team and they're going to run the ball a lot, I don't believe at all that Mark Ingram is coming in to be a lion share type of back. He's always, his entire career, been a running back by committee veteran and, that, and they've got Gus Edwards who was on pace for 1,500 yards over those same weeks that Lamar Jackson yeah, carrying started. Carrying the ball 18 times a game. I mean, he was an absolute beast. They're not going to just throw him, you know, to the curb. They just needed depth. Under the bus, Jason? Under the bus. No, under the Gus right bus. There. Not, uh, right there. When Gus bus goes under the Gus bus, it's troublesome. <sighs> he does a flip. Do you guys have sure. any excitement about Justice Hill? I, I Fourth-round draft pick, I, physical freak. I mean, he's fast. I, like He'll be good for the role, it, assuming that they commit to him being the pass-catching role, but I'd, that's you about it. You don't think it. he can emerge to be something beyond no. that in this offense? Like if, if all of a sudden they turn him into Theo Riddick, then I'm interested, but... Other than that, not really. And and Lamar Jackson ninety fifth percentile burst score, ninety seventh percentile yes. forty yard dash. He's fast. How yeah. big is he? He's one hundred ninety eight pounds. Yeah. yeah. So he's five ten one ninety eight. Yeah. It's the same same weight. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, he's fast. I don't think that he's going to get involved as much as a lot of. I I think he's the third back here in the rotation. 
maybe fourth if you include Lamar Jackson as a running Oof. back. I think I think something good. By the way, Justin Forsett was 5'8", 198 on that Baltimore offense. Sure. And took it by storm. Sure. It, yes. It, look, Shout out to Justin Forsett. It's not impossible. It's a but good it, follow on Twitter. But And there was also not a – well, because he, he don't make the law. That's right. Just enforce it. Though, once Lamar Jackson took over, I mean, it's there's not a whole lot of targets to go around to the running back core. And that Our, could change. That's it was his first year, but this these are the these are the numbers we have to go off. The only other piece to discuss really is Mark Mark Andrews. Well, real quick, are there any wide receivers you're you're willing to draft? No, Mark Andrews. Okay, <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's no. that's the only receiver uh, that I would be willing to touch here in a draft because. While we brought, I mean, we just brought up right. He's got a bunch of rookies. He's got Willie Sneed. Like yeah. he needs Mark Andrews, who was on pace in those same, you know, seven games with Lamar Jackson. He would have had the second most receiving yards of any rookie tight end uh, since two thousand. No, right behind no Jeremy Shockey. Go but ahead. It's off. The, that's off the heels of of a huge plays for Mark Andrews because even in that time with Lamar, where he, I mean, he was great. You know, he was getting about forty four yards a game. His snaps, he never saw over 40% of the snaps. He was averaging about 34% of those Lamar Jackson games. And that to me like, – That's, no, no, that's no. not going to get it done. But, but that to me is exactly an indication of a player to target. This is a guy who was not on the field that much because he was right. a rookie tight end. Rookie tight ends take a lot to integrate into snap counts. They couldn't have him on the field for all run plays. They brought him in as the pass-catching guy. Coming into year two – being an important part of this offense, if he ends up going realistically to the 60%, 70% on the field numbers and he becomes the number one target, I think Mark Andrews is, you know, look, if, if you miss out on your top tight ends and you don't want to play around with the middle tier and you just want to punt the position forever and use your last pick on Mark Andrews, I'd be fine walking away in a draft. I've done that. it. I've done it a few times. And you're right. If, if he can show us that, a la George Kittle, who was – like you, you saw the flashes. He just wasn't getting on the field and wasn't getting hyper targeted. But if Mark Andrews can earn that role, and Hayden Hurst remains kind of beat up, which, which Hayden he's, Hurt, oh, it's right there. It was really not it's right, not there. a big leap. <laughs> Hayden Hurst. All right, we need to move on All right, from Hurst. receivers in Baltimore to, um, well, let's just say receding. The Steelers. All right, the oh. nine six and one Steelers. <laughs> I like it. I like it. The nine six uh, and one. That's right. You start with ties and then they become losses, Mike. You didn't know that. Um, it, we were having <laughs> we were having long discussions before the yes. show. Let's get into it now about the Steelers and you know Mike Tomlin and where this team is heading. And I, I was talking a lot about look, Lev Bell gave him five solid years, and I think people are going to miss him, but we'll find out. Last year, they didn't make the playoffs. James Conner did have a monster fantasy season. Juju Smith-Schuster cemented himself as one of the best wide receivers in football. This year, no Antonio Brown. That's the big subtraction, and it's a monster one. Yes. As far as additions, they brought in Dante Moncrief on a one-year deal. They drafted Deontay Johnson in the third round, Benny Snell in the fourth at running back. And uh, Jesse James is gone too, guys. Um, oh, I'm aware. Yeah. I'm yeah. aware. There's a starting tight end. So 35% of the targets have been vacated. That's the fourth highest uh, number in football. So, <laughs> Which is really Antonio Brown and a little bit of Jesse James. That is absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, Lev, Lev wasn't on the field to absorb any. But last time he was, it was 85 receptions. So that's a lot of... Uh, targets and receptions that this team doesn't have that it's had over the past few years. We've talked a lot about James Conner. Mike is as bullish about James yes. Conner as a person can get. I have been I've been tempering the excitement. I, I I've said it before. I'm a twelve to fifteen finish for James Conner. I'm not burying him. I don't think he's a bad player. I think it's going to be tough sledding for James Conner. You started to see it in the back half of last year. He was not a top six guy over that period of time. But he was also banged up. Yeah. The, uh, and he, so I know James Conner is going to be the guy in this offense. I just don't know if being the guy in this offense is going to mean the same thing it did as when Antonio Brown was running rough shot over the secondary. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what Le'Veon Bell did in the offense, he was never a huge touchdown volume guy. A lot of times he would get by with crazy passing work, 
Yep. An incredible workload percentage, uh, you know, of the carries for the team. I don't think he, did he ever have double digits on the ground? No. Ever? No. And so not off the top of my head. No, nine, seven, three, eight, eight. The the question for me with James Conner, I think he he is the guy that's going to inherit the role. I don't believe that they're going to go to some committee the way that some beat report and we should we should mention some beat reporters do believe that they're going to go to a committee. I think Tomlin has been around the league long enough, had enough opportunities with different backs going down um, t to know he uses a workhorse. However, we did see after James Conner came back when he got right back into that workhorse role, that they they used Jalen Samuel more in the receiving game than they did James Conner. And so when I'm projecting out uh, Conner for this season, I think he is the man. I think he's going to have a great season. But if his touchdowns stay where Lev Bells were historically and some of that passing work goes to Jalen Samuel – I'm a little bit lower. I still like I still like James Conner. I think he's a good back, but I've got him right now as my running back 13 in half-point PPR. One of the features of the ultimate draft kit that we put into our rankings is a risk factor for players. And so when you talk about upper echelon, like every year in the first and second round, you have busts. You have guys that um, look like they're going to be the best players in fantasy that, that drop off. Um, I don't believe that Conner will bust, but I think he is a higher – risk factor because he does not have a track record beyond a season and the financial investment on Connor is isn't what it is on other players um so Mike do you do you think Connor is a risk in any capacity or is that out of your mind as well I the risk to me for James Connor is only related to Antonio Brown does can can Mike Tomlin can Ben Roethlisberger and more specifically Juju Smith-Schuster can they keep the offense trucking at, at as a, this elite upper echelon offense. Because before Antonio Brown was going off, the Steelers were still great, but they're, they weren't in the upper echelon when it came to offense, when it came to total yardage and total points. So the question to me is scoring opportunity for James Conner. He's going to be fed the ball a ton. I'm not really worried about Jalen Samuels. What you're talking about, Jay, is – what the the very very last game of the season where, where James Conner had just come back from his injury and it was a game where it if they won it didn't matter if they lost it didn't matter like they won and they didn't make it in the playoffs and that was the where Samuels came in he got eight targets James Conner still saw three targets in that game so that's it's hard to really sure I mean move forward with that type of information no I, I agree it's one game but I'm just saying we have a super small sample but we did see that after Connor came back and it did not look like they were taking it easy on Connor he still had a ton of carries in that game it was just interesting to me because we had not seen that kind of utilization with Jalen Samuel prior to James Connor getting injured one of the reasons we like Dante Moncrief to have a uh, interestingly a really good opportunity. Yes. Now, maybe you're like maybe you a James Washington guy and you like him more. I think we like Moncrief. But one of the reasons we love him is because of what he's walking into. The Steelers wide receivers as a whole had more receptions than any other team in football last season. They had 283 receptions at the wide receiver position. I think that's why I think you just go and take a shot with a non-Juju option. Juju's not going up. Juju's not going to be getting and, – and okay, yes, maybe he goes up five catches or 15 <laughs> targets his he was so cat he's so high right now in career totals he had 166 targets last year that's my point and so when you look at Vance McDonald Dante Moncrief James Washington Deontay Johnson I think you got to take a shot at a non-juju option you believe in for if if you believe that the Steelers are going to do what they've done yeah so a little pushback on that from from my perspective I think the reason that the that the Steelers had the most volume, the you know the 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 most yardage and targets for any wide receiver core, is because they had two of the five best wide receivers in the National Football League. We have a history where Antonio Brown was there with other secondary options that were good, not great, and 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 they usually were not a top twenty four wide receiver in fantasy by the end of the year. And Juju to me still has room to go up. No, certainly not in targets. I mean, well, sure, he five. Could, he could. Was, but the touchdown. Antonio Brown, sorry to cut you off, Jay, but Antonio Brown had back-to-back -back seasons in 2014 and 15, 181 targets, 193 targets. So it's it's not completely outside of the realm of possibility. No, although but the I comp would, there is A-B. Right, right. The comp is A-B. But I, I just wanted it said that, like, 
I believe it is it is very within the realm of possibility that Juju is the number one wide receiver at the end of the year. Okay. I mean, it, he had seven touchdowns. Antonio Brown is a double-digit averaging uh, touchdown machine, and if he can end up getting to that point to where he's at 10, 11, 12 touchdowns, that puts him right in that number one wide receiver conversation. Yeah, I, look, all my bins on this offense are, are in the negative capacity for the Steelers. I think that they're going to have – I think there's going to be a, a struggle for Connor to maintain his level of production. I think there's going to be a struggle for Juju to establish himself as the one in this offense with the difference of coverage he receives, being on the outside more often. Yes, the targets are going to be there, but I don't think the offense is going to be as good. And look, Jason went on record last year with his big – Patriots uh, beginning of the end I think it's going to be a tough year because of a tough division Baltimore and the Browns in particular and I think that I think Juju is another player that has a wider range of outcomes than people believe I think he's a really great player Jason just said he could be the number one player I think he could be someone that disappoints fantasy owners I really do what would that be like wide receiver 15 I think somebody that could end up in the 12 to 15 range for sure I mean the targets are going to be there but um He's going to have to do. He's going to have to score. Um, where did he finish last year as a fantasy wideout? What uh, was his rank? Depends on scoring format. Usually about uh, six. Usually around six. And where is he being drafted as? About five or six right now at the wide receiver position. Um, do you got either. Do you I have, have that in, in front of you. Uh, so I have him at wide receiver, finishing as the wide receiver nine last year. You haven't? No, no. That, he did. Okay. He That's half point. In half point, he finished yeah, as a nine. Currently going two o four which is the wide receiver seven. So I, I would say that I think um, 10 is about where he where he's going to end up, nine or 10. I think it's pre- – Wide receiver six, I'm sorry. Most people presume that it's going to be better for him to not to be the main guy. I think last year was really the ceiling for him outside of exploding at the tight end uh, touchdown mark. But you guys – I mean, look, most people are in Juju's corner. I get that. He's a great player. I just don't know if he can be a top three guy – and we haven't seen it before. Does that worry you at all that you've never seen him without Antonio Brown on the other side very well, often? Uh, is very, I mean, there's obviously been a handful of yeah, games. Yeah, very but. small sample. But we do have, I believe, four games without Antonio Brown over the last couple of years. I do know that his numbers have been <laughs> – oh, oh, they've been wide receiver number right. one numbers in those games that Antonio Brown hasn't no been doubt, there. No doubt, no doubt. And the, the thing that we have seen on the field it, with Antonio Brown is that we've seen Juju be a dominant – NFL wide receiver you know what I mean like you just watch he passes the eye test you go that's why we you you know you say a star was being born because right off the bat rookie year you knew there was something special about this guy now he's got the opportunity to be big Ben's number one honed in on target and I'll say that on top of just saying now that those targets are available specifically red zone targets are available last year Antonio Brown had the eighth most targets inside the red zone 24 so if, I mean, if those are up for grabs, I'm not saying 24 additional for Juju, but well, you he, give, he like, had the most in the league last year. Juju did. Juju actually he had 26 uh, tied I, for the most red zone targets in football. I, I'm doing this from memory. I don't remember if it was four or five. He had four or five uh, tackled inside the two yard line. Right. So I mean, he was very, very close last year to uh, some more Pater. Look, I'm I'm interested to see how he works in this offense. In a different role. Most of the time when I watched that offense last year, Juju was just wide open in the middle of the field. The crossers, back and forth. So right. I, I'm Reggie, excited to see it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, for what it's worth, uh, anecdotal, but uh, Reggie Wayne says he's worried for Juju. He obviously went through it going behind Marvin Harrison back in the day with P- Peyton Manning. He was so excited to get his shot, found out it's harder than you think to be the wide receiver one. So that speaks a little bit. He's also case, very Andy. young to do it. I mean, he's a 22-year-old guy yes. that, look, he put a lot of pressure on himself last year, the fumble, that situation. You've got a mental game and a mental hurdle to get over. He's a hyper-talented player. I'm just a little more risk in my mind than some of the other upper echelon guys. I think, Mike, when you were setting Tyreek Hill out, I was really shocked that you put Juju up ahead of Tyreek. Um, myself because of that risk factor, but sure. it's not like Tyreek doesn't have a risk factor. <laughs> how early is too early for the Vance dance, Mike? Oh man, how early is too early? Current ADP seven twelve. <sighs> we're we're getting to the point where it's going to be too early for the Vance dance if he keeps sashaying and shanting his way up into the. If he gets into the sixth round, then 
I unfortunately will have to be out. I mean, like seven, twelve, the back of the seventh, eighth round is where I'm comfortable taking a shot on a potential is, breakout tight end. That's your Vance stance. Yes. Okay. Um, despite finishing as the quarterback three last year, is Big Ben draftable in 2019? Sure, he's he's draftable, but in New England Week One. Three and ten against Brady in his career. Do you want a quarterback to draft that Maybe you don't want to play don't. week one? No. Maybe not. <laughs> no, I was gonna say Forgot about that. If you're in a single quarterback league, I'm not drafting Big Ben. He's my eighteenth ranked quarterback, and we've got plenty I mean, it's last year he played a full season. That's rare. All right, we need to talk about the Cleveland Browns. The exciting Cleveland Browns. They are very exciting. Yeah, they start off against Tennessee at home, then they travel to the Jets. Then they're at home against the Rams, and then they're in Baltimore. The seven, eight, and one Browns, the twenty to one to win the Super Bowl Browns. Get out of here, Odell Beckham Jr. Biggest addition of any team this off season. One of the best players in football gets added to your roster. You pick up Kareem Hunt, who could play a complimentary role with Nick Chubb later in the season. He's suspended for the first eight weeks. And then you've got Duke Johnson in the backfield as well. Baker Mayfield coming into his own. Absolutely did everything you could ever hope of a rookie quarterback after stealing the job viciously from hero Tyrod Taylor. Um, look, there's a lot of swagger. Man, how when when Tyrod went down in that game, when, like I wish I could hear Hugh Jackson going, fine, 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 fine. We'll play the number one overall pick, fine. Baker, I hope you're happy. Unbelievable. That, that you get to go play. Look, and then after that game, the well, Browns, we'll I got to check the tape. We'll we'll see. <laughs> Were you not watching the game? I forgot you he gotta said You got to go check the forgot tape. Forgot he said he had to check as the, to whether or not Baker that's why I give should the be Cardinals, your starting quarterback. I give the Cardinals credit now. <laughs> because the Cardinals are just not I guess there, there was one comment about we'll see who earns the starting job, but since that point it's been like, okay, Kyler's the guy, duh. Kyler's the guy. Yes. Stop um, it. The Browns, a lot of swagger heading into 2019. Are they the next big thing? Whew. You've got so much to talk about, so much potential on the offensive side with uh, Todd Monken taking over at OC, Freddie Kitchens, and what he did with the offense. He's the head coach now. Beckham, Landry, Callaway, Njoku, Chubb, it's, it's out of control. Baker. You have, you have one of, of the best quarterbacks in the league, one of the best wide receiving cores in the league, one of the best running back cores in the league, and one of the best – young up and coming tight ends in the league. If if this offense can't get it together with a new offensive head coach, the the offensive coordinator from the Bucks last year who shockingly oh, Monken, were, man. you know, top 3 across the board. It's kind of that air raid system, at least Monkins is I believe they're still going to be running more of Freddie Kitchens system there. This offense should be moving. Um the question it will. is It will move. The question is is it too divided? Is it with with Odell Beckham, with Jarvis Landry, with Njoku? Can any of these guys be the complete dominant fantasy force that you hope they can be because they're just good players on a good offense? Or will the plethora of options steal away from, you know, obviously those three guys can't all catch it, touchdowns. It's great for Baker. I mean, it's great for Baker to have those weapons, no doubt about it. I think it was hard to predict efficiency. Last year was a weird – year for Landry in and of itself. Like when you talk about the yes, wide receiver core, you look up drops. I mean, he led the league in drops. I mean, it's Jarvis Landry, one of the, some of the best hands in football. His career catch rate was much higher every year prior to last year. Last year, somehow 54% previous four years, 69, 71, 66, 75. You don't know if that was getting on the same page with Baker. You don't know if that was, well, there was a there was you know, a big change when Baker took over. They started using him downfield and not using him as the Jarvis Landry really short just intermediate. Just kind of lob it to him. Yeah, and so I, I think that that makes sense. However, targeted I think that, targeted more than any other player in football on third and long. They should. They whoops. Presumably, you're going to switch that. Right? He's not going to be the downfield guy anymore. He's going to go back to doing what Jarvis Landry excels at: be that short intermediate guy. Because they've kind of got a wide receiver one here. Well, he previously excelled at looking at the box score, seeing, wow, that's a lot of receptions. Oh, that's not a lot of fantasy points. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was where he excelled. PPR machine only. The one thing I'll say is, like, I, I have worries, right? I, I just brought them up, splitting all the targets, splitting all the touchdowns, dividing it up between all these great players. But I don't believe that's fair because usually when you have teams that are great, 
right? The 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 best offenses, and you don't complain about Robert Woods and Cooper Cup and Brandon Cooks and Todd Gurley, and there's just too many good options. What ends up happening is they're just a great offense, and you want all of the pieces. And I feel like my big hiccup is Jarvis Landry. I don't want him. I pass him on every draft. There's like no round I'll draft him. And I I I hearken back to your. Uh, Andy, your thing that you always try to remind yourself on that you've learned over the last couple of years that wide receiver twos are on their team are still really good fantasy options. So am I making a mistake here with Jarvis wanting to just not touch him because he's behind all these other options? Look, we we haven't said a lot of positive stuff about Landry on this show, but there is the there is the train of thought that Landry's going to benefit in a big way from. Odell Beckham being on the outside, him coming underneath, and in him having another year with Baker Mayfield and being far more efficient. And if this offense is cruising, you know, we talk about over and over again, you love all three pass catching options in Los Angeles. Love them. Mm hmm. Okay. I don't I don't know why we were boxed into the thought that there's one pass catching option in Cleveland. That's the worry because Landry's not kind of good at football. He's really, really good at football. So then you just talk about, well, they might spread it around a lot. Spreading around a lot works pretty darn well in Kansas City and Los Angeles. So it is – I think it's a, it could be a trap. It's not a, I'm not predicting it. Because there's still the But Browns. it could be a trap. Like, I mean, I, sorry, Cleveland, Peel back but you guys, the know, you guys know this. The banana. Like, <laughs> anytime you're excited about the Browns, you're always let down. And and this so is it's different, like, man. This is I a different I believe it team. is different because I so because I start, it is. This is I different. start thinking like what it comes down to is do you believe in the coaches and do you believe in the yes. quarterback? Yes. That's what it matters. And I definitely believe in Baker. And I am unsure about Freddie Kitchens as a head coach. Well, I, I believe in John Dorsey. I believe in the personnel. I believe in believe in the t I believe. I believe. I believe in the team. And uh, so yeah, you, you're kind of marked a little bit. You've got a little bit of a stink stain. On the on the franchise, it's hard to get that off in one year. It is or two years. As the Browns, I can mean. Nick Chubb be your team's running back one, Mike? Oof. Let's say you start your draft out with DeAndre Hopkins in the first, Nick Chubb in the second. I I believe so. Yes, because even though the uh, the the looming Kareem Hunt coming back here in what week ten or so, I mean that's still plenty of time to get. All, all you need out of Nick Chubb. Even, I don't think it's going to be Kareem Hunt comes in here. Let's say the Browns are, they're playing well. Nick Chubb's having a good season. They don't all of a sudden say, "Okay, Kareem, you get in there and you're going to take fifty percent of the of the carries." Like that's just not going to happen. The, the football team will not move away from what is working. And I think that Nick Chubb is a sensational running back. And now, if the Browns are actually on that precipice of being a good team. Because I think that Chubb does need to be on a good team to really excel and be your running back one. So I, I think that he is worth the draft price, the stats, even though you know you halfway through the season, you may be trying to figure out what your second half plan is. That still doesn't take me away from spending that early pick on him. He was only the, the starter in nine games last year, and he was second in the NFL in 20-plus yard rushes. Saquon led the way, but Chubb, Zeke, Mixon, and Gurley were tied with 11, and that was not playing weeks one through six pretty much at all. He did score nine fantasy points fewer against top 16 rushing defense. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, look, they need to be a good team, like you said, for him to have that opportunity. Are you interested in David Njoku before we move on to the Bengals? I, I am not really. Uh, the, the, unless you guys want to talk more about Njoku, I think he could break out. I just... I don't really see it happening. Do you believe that Baker can return on draft value? He he definitely could, yes. Do I expect I don't him think it's to? likely. Right. Okay. I don't think it's likely just because you have to take him so high. He's a quarterback. If In order to justify taking, unless you're in a two-quarterback league, if you're in a single-quarterback league in order to justify taking a quarterback high and missing out on a running back or wide receiver, they have to, they have to dominate and – Baker certainly could. We just made the argument about this great offense. Baker, in once he was the starter, Baker was averaging 271 passing yards and two passing touchdowns per game. As a rookie, that's, which is unbelievable. Without Odo Beckham. That's 4,300 yards and 33 touchdowns. Let, okay, before we move on. Baker has to do 
he has to be Aaron Rodgers in this offense. He, he's not going to run the football very much. No. So one of the things that positions fantasy quarterbacks a little bit differently is that extra element of being able to run the ball a little bit. It's what makes Deshaun Watson a, a potential number one type of guy. So Baker does have to stay efficient. He does have to throw a lot of touchdowns. He needs to be in that category of the high touchdown type of guy in order to be in that category. He could do it with those players. I mean, my goodness, he could have big Just plays. Saying And, and uh, if you look at Odo Beckham and Eli Manning, Odo Beckham was worth three uh three percent to Eli's pass and completion. Which that's not a small number to go from Baker Mayfield last year, who was a uh, near sixty four percent completion guy. If you get up just a you get a bump of two percent because you have Odo Beckham. <laughs> you should see uh Big Ben's numbers before he had A B. Sure. We were talking about this. They were worse than Derek Carr's without A B. So a good Hall of Fame. Great wide receiver can go a long way. Yes. It's going to be fun to watch. We're moving on. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? This is for Marvin. Oh! Uh, the Bengals. You're, we're playing this? This, this Just be, say Mar goodbye. I mean, Ma 18 Marvin. years deserves a song, Mike. Look, Andy liked him. Yeah, that's true. Andy I, had don't, I don't know if picture. I liked him. You had a signed picture. No, that's no, that was Jackson. Huge. That was, no, I no, know no, they no. seem like the same <laughs> no, no, exact no, no, no. level of talent at the coaching position. That was Jason. How dare you? Oh. That was that was two win Hugh Jackson. Oh, who Hugh Marvin Lewis hired? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's why. See, I was they are they are connected. Okay. All right. My bad. Um. Yeah. Look, they go from. We were talking about this beforehand, right? You've you've got a six and ten Bengals who Vegas says are odds on going to, you know, they've got a high probability of finishing near the worst in the league, getting that number one pick next year. You have, for fantasy purposes, you're going from Martin Lewis, defensive-minded head coach, very reined in on the offense, to an offensive head coach, to Zach Taylor, the the protege under uh, Sean McVay. Yeah, Bengals are hundred to one with the Bills, Giants, Lions, Bucks, and Redskins. At winning the Super Bowl? Yeah. I didn't realize I had to double check to see how bad it was. I would not make that bet. That would put the Jets above them. The Raiders. So you are apprehensive about some of the potential output for this offense. Yes. The I, expectations. You said this might be the team that you would you'd body. Yeah, it might be the team that I body in the sense that Look, not everybody's going to be good next year for offense. We we only talk about the offensive side of the ball here predominantly, and in the off season, everything looks rosy for most of the big names. And this team's full of big names: AJ Green, Tyler Boyd came out last year on fire, uh, Joe Mixon. There are plenty of options here, but Zach Taylor, yeah, he sp sprayed on his spritz of yes, Sean McVay's did. cologne and said hire me, but we've got a head coach who has very, very little that we know about. You know what I mean? Like, it, we, no track record, no history to draw upon. So, is he a good head coach? I hope so. Is he a if terrible head coach? If only had gone out there and lost a bunch of games in college, that would have been helpful. <laughs> but, that's <laughs> fair. But at least we know what kind of offensive output we have with Cliff We Kingsbury. know what we're getting. The, a loser. No, yeah, you got more of a track record. I so get the, it combo of Vegas saying that look this team is going to be bad they've got a new unproven head coach if the wheels start to fall off I worry about having these players I worry about even Joe Mixon who I I think he's such a talented back thankfully he's a pass catching back as well so if they're down they can they could still utilize him but I I think if AJ Green re-injures himself Dalton could get pulled at some point what about, not, what about regression for Tyler Boyd if Green is healthy? Yes. I mean, I mean uh, well, the, Tyler Boyd was better yes. in the games that A.J. Green played, uh, significantly better. So that he, when, when we saw, you know, there's the misnomer of maybe, well, A.J. Green missed games. That's what Tyler not Boyd a, broke out. Not that, a that wasn't ton true. of time together. I, my counterpoint to your point is that they already were all those bad things last year, and we had a very nice output from Joe Mixon. I, I looked up a stat this weekend, 2.59 yards before being contacted out of the backfield. That's the kind of number you see with kind of the out shot out of a cannon type of guys. Philip Lindsay, Austin Eckler led the league in that category. I was shocked to see what Mixon did 
with his offensive line, they already stunk. 21st in rushing, 24th in passing. That would be my only counterpoint. Not to say, look, it caps their ceiling to be on a bad team. Most of the time as a fantasy owner, I'm out there looking for running backs on great teams with touchdown ceilings. Mixon last year, you didn't know if he'd find his way around the goal line from week to week. Right. That's a problem. His ceiling is a problem. I agree with you on that. So let's talk about A.J. Green. Great wide receiver. Was dominating last year. You can't forget. right? When he started the season, I believe he was the wide receiver seven um, and, and just – it, it was the wide receiver nine in points per game through week eight before his injury. Okay. And, and, and then he gets injured, but now he's been injured a lot, usually below yeah. the shin. I mean, he's got ankle where, and where, feet where, problems. Below. <laughs> I'm just saying, ankle <laughs> and feet problems. He could have said foot. He below really could have toe no, problems. No, nobody because, has ever said, well, my biggest problem area is below no, the shin. I agree with you. Sometimes it's feet. Sometimes it's toes. Sometimes it's – I mean – there's 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 a multitude all below the of shin, all like, below the shin. Yeah, I you know what I mean. There's no I, knee problems. I, I do I know what you mean. I'm just saying that people don't say that. People <laughs> will start. Yes. Who's coming with me? <laughs> uh, He's got a real phalange problem. Um, are you guys fearful of injury with AJ Green? I am. I love AJ Green. Yeah. So I, I I think AJ Green. If I could get him in the fourth round of a fantasy draft, it, it is stealing. That's how I feel. And he's going around there. This last head-to-head -head mock draft that uh, didn't quite go as well for me as it did for Mike, in my opinion. Look, I, I took the gamble on Green going at 402. Right. He ended up going at like 311 or something. Hmm. That just seems like theft for a guy that was on pace for 81, 12, 33, and 14 last year. I get it. I am worried that he will have problems below the shin as well. Mm. See? It's but starting. <laughs> But look, I'm, I'm going to go for it. If I'm if I'm at the back of the third and he's <laughs> there, and it's like, okay, you can get uh, – I mean, these are the guys realistically in that range then. A.J. Green, and if you want a wide receiver. A.J. Green, Amari Cooper, Stephon Diggs, who Stephon Diggs has also had sub-shin problems as well. Look, when you order a burger at McDonald's, Jason, mm -hmm. you're going to go for it. Yeah. Most of the time, you're going to be pretty happy. Every once in a while, the mayonnaise is going to be bad. But you take Most your shot. Most of the time. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. You, thank you. Terrible yeah. analogy. It's probably, you're probably <laughs> so, throwing up. I think that's an appropriate reality. I feel like what you're doing when you're drafting Bengals is you're, you're, getting, you're going, you're going the to McDonald's. Yeah. And look. It's, it's, food contamination. It's delicious. You could be like, oh, I got such a value. This was like a value menu item. I got, I got fourth. number four. And then afterwards, it's going to be like, oh, this is so good. Week one. Oh, this is delicious. You know what? I don't feel so good. <laughs> I wish I didn't do that in back of the draft. Why wasn't I smart and just stayed with the good team? I should have got a salad. The risk is that they are not a productive offense, and that will you, – you, you'll have the mixing games where he gets all the volume and workload, but it's inefficient, touchdown-free performances. You saw it sometimes last year. He's a great player, but um, I – are you guys surprised there's not more hype around Zach Taylor? Because he seems like he has missed the – like he may have spritzed on the cologne of Sean McVay to get hired. It was, it but was there's already, not a lot of. It was watered down, though. I mean, he he cut that thing at least seventy five percent of water. So he, this was not a full. This was not a full spritz. This was not a full. I just I met Sean McVay. He he just got dressed and he's got it. The cologne's still fresh, so it's rubbing off on me. So no, I'm not surprised the hype isn't there. But if he can manage to institute. Sean McVay's system and do it right, that is a, that's a huge deal. Like the the numbers I talked about with Todd Gurley, where you have it's Todd Gurley, and you can't sell out to stop the run because the plays are designed so well. So that's that is that's the upside for the Bengals, even if they're bad, that the offense can still be churning out. Does that mean? Look, they only have 4.3% vacated targets. That's the second lowest in the NFL. These are the same pass catchers. Green, yeah. Boyd, John Ross, who can you know say what you will about John Ross on his own. He's not a fantasy option. He helps your quarterback if he can run straight down the field. And Andy Dalton, there have been seasons where he has huge plays down the field. Is there a, a world where you're interested in Andy Dalton in any capacity? No. Okay. Two, no. Two, 
two quarterback leagues, no. you want to take a late shot. I don't think that's a problem, especially because in two quarterback leagues, you probably want to draft three quarterbacks just to be safe, especially if you're not going top end heavy, which I don't like to do. I'll grab three later quarterbacks. Dalton is definitely in the mix. Dalton or Carr? Where do you lean? Between in uh, I lean Carr. Yeah, that's right. But it's yeah. like it, just Carr. just as a as a point because we were talking about Zach Taylor in 2017. I just want to make sure everyone knows this. Okay. In two, it's, that was a long time ago, right? 2017. Really long time. Really super seventh, long seventh time grade? ago. <laughs> super long time ago. Year before last, he was hired as the assistant wide receiver coach for the Los Angeles Rams. And then quarterbacks? And then upgraded to quarterback, and now you're the head coach of a franchise. Go get them, Tiger. That, I want to know how you strong. how do you get moved. From Sean assistant McVay. wide receiver coach to quarterback, and what do what Sean are they seeing McVay. with you on the field? Well, he was a quarterback in college, so he. No, you said he moved from the Rams wide receiver yes. to quarterback. Yes, from the Rams assistant wide receiver coach. Then in 2018, he became the quarterback coach McVay. under the same under the same same offense. Same so offense. something he's was he doing something with the wide receivers? Where they're like, you know where that could go? That could go in the quarterback room. Well, they just, he's friends with McVeigh, and he's <laughs> also. <laughs> He's also a young buck. Like Jason, you realize we're older than Sean than uh, oh, Zach uh, Taylor. Yeah, hundred percent. That's Goodness. ridiculous. <laughs> All right, let's because uh, we're so young. Close it out. Pristine deal of the day. Oh, the judge did well. The pristine deal of the day. <laughs> Nick Chubb signed Browns jersey forty nine dollars oh, yesterday. Nice at pristineauction.com. Use the registration code Ballers to sign up. And check out their hundreds of daily auctions. Guys, that is it for today's episode of the podcast. Oh, we made it. We made it through. Jason is back. We've got more episodes coming this week. And then we'll be five a week. Make sure you subscribe. Oh, my goodness. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, anything that has the internet. And we'll catch you next time, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.